Section 16 of A Book of Fairy Tale Bears. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by April 6090, California, United States of America. A Book of Fairy Tale Bears by Clifton Johnson. Chapter 16 the bees and the bears there was a time when the honey bees had no stings and were as harmless as houseflies they were just as industrious as they are now but they had no end of trouble they could not defend their honey from the many creatures that loved it and stole it at every opportunity in vain they hid their comb among the crannies of lofty cliffs and far up in tall hollow trees birds with long beaks would suck out the honey the squirrels were constantly stealing it and worst of all the bears were so clever in getting it no matter where it was hidden that very little escaped them whole swarms of bees often starved in the long winter because their store of food had been plundered at last when they had about given up hope that any of them could survive much longer they heard that the great wizard wakanda was traveling through the country he had left his beautiful home at spirit lake and was making this journey to help any who were in real distress so the bees resolved to make known their woes to him they sent messengers to meet him and a present of delicious honey which some of them had succeeded in keeping out of the way of their enemies wakanda received the messengers very graciously enjoyed the honey and listened with indignation to their tales of persecution for a time he was uncertain how to help the industrious little creatures and he asked them to return three days later when he would announce just what he would do for them the messengers went away greatly delighted and told the news not only to their own people but to their cousins the wasps hornets and bumblebees on the appointed day the bees were on hand and so were their cousins wakanda regarded the latter rather suspiciously but the bees commended them to him and he gave them all a friendly welcome then he made a speech and praised the bees for their industry in gathering food during the summer to eat in the long cold winter he ended by giving them the same sort of weapons that their cousins possessed the bees presently flew away and now they engaged in honey storing more earnestly than ever not long afterward a couple of bears who were roaming through the forest saw some of the bees going in and out of a knothole in a big tree up climbed the bears with saucy assurance expecting to put their paws into the hole and pull out the sweet treasure but before they had reached their goal the bees came forth in great numbers and attacked them the little creatures did not fly around now in a helpless panic as they did formerly but at once attacked their enemies they stung the marauders about their eyes and lips and wherever else they could reach them with their terrible new weapons the bears could not comprehend this unforeseen ability of the bees to fight they tried to climb higher but all the time the insects returning from gathering honey increased the number of their assailants at length the bears howling with rage and terror gave up their effort scrambled back to the ground and ran away other swarms served the enemies who would rob them in the same way they were not always equally successful in defending their honey stores but never since has there been any danger that the bees would all perish for lack of food end of section sixteen section seventeen of a book of fairy tale bears this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings in the public domain for more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. A Book of Fairy Tale Bears by Clifton Johnson Bruins Ride Once upon a time there was a farmer who drove far up the mountainside with his sledge to get a load of leaves for stable litter to keep his cattle warm in the winter. When he got to where the leaves were plentiful, he backed his sledge close up to a convenient bank and began to pitch them on the sledge. But in the midst of the leaves, lay a bear who had curled up there to sleep through the winter soon he felt the man trampling about and when the man's back chanced to be turned he made a sudden leap and landed right on the sledge 
the horse got wind of Bruin, and was so frightened he ran off down the descent toward home ten times faster than he had come up, and he carried the bear along as a passenger. Bruin was not lacking in courage, but such a ride made him anxious, to say the least. There he sat, holding on as well as he could, looking timidly this way and that, as he sped along in the hope that he might see some place where he could throw himself off with safety. However, he dared not risk a tumble. When he had gone some distance he met a peddler, who said, Surely that is the sheriff. Whither can he be going? He must be journeying far, and have little time to spare. He drives so fast. As for Bruin, he spoke never a word. He had all he could do to hold on. A little farther along he met a beggar woman who said, Ha! That is the parson. She curtsied and begged for a penny in God's name. But Bruin said never a word, and gave all his energy to sticking fast, while he continued his wild flight. Shortly afterward he met Reynard the fox. Ho, ho! Reynard exclaimed. Here is Bruin, out taking a ride. Then he shouted, Stop a moment and let me ride with you. But Bruin made no reply. He simply held on like grim death, while the horse ran as fast as he could lay hooves to the ground. All right, Reynard screamed. If you won't take me with you, I tell you that although you now travel as if you were a gentleman in your furs, I don't doubt that you'll come to some bad end for driving so like a daredevil. But Bruin heard none of Reynard's ill-natured remarks. The horse galloped on until he got to the farm, and without slackening his mad pace, dashed into the open stable door. The result was that his harness was worn off, the sledge came to a sudden stop, and Bruin was thrown against the side of the stable and killed. All this time, the man who owned the sledge knew nothing of what had happened. He continued to pitch forkful after forkful of leaves down the bank, but when he thought he had enough and went to tie the leaves on the sledge to prevent them from slipping off on the journey home, he could find neither sledge nor horse, so he hurried along the road, hoping that the horse had only strayed quietly a little way in search of food. After a while, he met the peddler. Have you seen my horse and sledge? he asked. No the peddler replied. But I met the sheriff not long ago, and he drove so fast I could feel sure he was hastening to arrest some criminal. The man went on, and soon met the beggar woman. Have you seen my horse and sledge? he asked. No, the beggar woman answered. But I met the parson down yonder. He must have some important errand, else he would not have driven so fast. I noticed that he had borrowed a horse. The man went on, and presently met the fox. Have you seen my horse and sledge? he questioned. Yes, I have, the fox said, and my neighbor Bruin was riding on the sledge, and going as if he was running away with stolen property. The rascal, the farmer exclaimed. Perdition take him. He'll ruin the horse with his wild driving. If he does that, the fox said, I advise you to kill him, take off his skin, and roast him in your fireplace. Don't forget that you are indebted to me for the information I have given you. If your horse comes out all right, I think you ought to reward me by driving back here with your sledge and giving me a lift over the mountain. I have a fancy to see how it feels to ride instead of going on foot. Well, the man said, I'll consider it. Meet me at this spot tomorrow morning. He was sure, however, that Reynard was designing to play off some of his tricks on him, and when he returned to meet the sly fox the next day, he carried a loaded gun on his sledge. Instead of getting a ride, Reynard got a charge of shot that ended his life, so the farmer secured both a bear skin and a fox skin. End of section 17. Section 18 of A Book of Fairy Tale Bears. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. A Book of Fairy Tale Bears by Clifton Johnson. The Bear and the Tailor. Once upon a time, there was an exceedingly proud princess who asked a riddle of every suitor for her hand. She announced publicly that all comers were welcome to try their skill and that whoever could solve her riddle should be her husband. But for a long time, every man who presented himself failed to answer rightly and was sent away with scorn and derision. It so happened that three tailors, 
who were travelling together came to the royal city and they soon heard all about the proud princess and her riddle and were disposed to try their luck at winning her the older two were confident they would be successful because they had made so many fine and strong stitches with never a wrong one surely they could not fail to do the right thing here too the third tailor was a lazy young scamp who did not even understand his own trade but he thought that luck would befriend him just this once for if it did not what was to become of him the two others said to him you had better keep away you'll never succeed with your small allowance of brains but the youth was not to be daunted and said he had set his mind on solving the riddle and meant to shift for himself so he marched off as if the whole world belonged to him the three tailors presented themselves before the princess and told her they had come to guess her riddle then with a low bow the two elder tailors said here at last are the right men each with an understanding so fine you could almost thread a needle with it well the princess responded you notice that my hair is draped so you cannot see it but i would have you know that it is of two different colors and you must tell me what those colors are that is my riddle your question is more easily answered than i expected the oldest tailor said no doubt your hair is black and white like the cloth we call pepper and salt wrong the princess announced if your hair is not black and white the second tailor said i am confident that it is red and brown like my father's sunday coat wrong again the princess said now let the third speak i see he thinks he knows all about it the young tailor stepped forward bold as brass and said the princess has gold and silver hair on her head and those are the two colors on hearing this the princess turned pale and almost fainted for the young tailor had hit the mark and she firmly believed that not a soul could guess her riddle as soon as she recovered herself she said don't fancy that you have won me yet there is something else you must do in the stable is a bear with which you must spend the night if i find that you are still alive when i get up in the morning you shall marry me she fully expected to rid herself of the tailor in this way for the bear had never left any one alive who had once come within reach of his claws the tailor however had no notion of being scared but said cheerily bravely ventured is half won when evening came he was taken to the stable the bear at once sprang toward him to give him a warm welcome with his great paws gently gently the tailor said i must teach you manners out of his pockets he took some walnuts which he began cracking with his teeth and eating as though he had not a care in the world this made the bear long for some nuts himself the tailor thrust his hand into his pocket and drew forth not a nut but a pebble of much the same size and shape he gave it to the bear who put it in his mouth but try as he might he could not crack it dear me he said what a blockhead i must be i can't even crack a nut will you crack it for me he said to the tailor you're a nice sort of fellow the tailor said the idea of having those great jaws and not being able to crack a walnut so saying he slyly substituted a nut for the pebble and soon cracked it let me try again the bear said the thing looks so easy as you do it that i think i must be able to manage it myself the tailor gave him the pebble again and the bear bit and gnawed away as hard as he could but to all no purpose presently the tailor produced a fiddle from under his coat and began playing on it the tune was so merry that the bear could not help dancing and after he had danced for some time he was so pleased that he asked the tailor if it was easy to learn the art of fiddling why it's like child's play the tailor said look here you press the strings with the fingers of the left hand and draw the bow across the strings with the right hand so then the tune goes up and down tra la 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 oh the bear cried i wish i could play like that then i could dance whenever i felt disposed to do so will you give me some lessons certainly the tailor said if you will do your best to learn but let me look at your paws dear me your nails are terribly long i must cut them before you can handle a fiddle in a corner of the stable was a wooden vice and he had the bear put his paws in it and screwed them fast 
now wait while i fetch my scissors he said and he lay down in a corner and went to sleep the bear was very uncomfortable and he groaned and growled so loudly that he was heard by the princess in her room in the palace she thought he was roaring with delight as he destroyed the tailor next morning she rose feeling quite cheerful and free from care but when she glanced out toward the stable there stood the tailor in front of the door looking as fresh and lively as a fish in the water she was much disturbed but her promise to marry him had been made publicly and the promise could not be broken without disgracing her so the king ordered out the state coach to take her and the tailor to church to be married as they were starting the other two tailors who were envious of the younger one's good fortune went to the stable and released the bear from the vice immediately the beast gave chase to the carriage foaming at the mouth with rage the princess heard him coming puffing and growling and she was much frightened oh dear she cried the bear is after us but the tailor was not alarmed in the least he stood on his head stuck his legs out of the carriage window and shouted to the bear do you see this vice if you don't go back this minute i'll screw you tight into it the bear wanted nothing more to do with the vice and he turned round and ran off as fast as he could go while the carriage continued its journey to the church there the tailor and the princess were married and he lived with her afterward many years as merry as a lark whoever does not believe this story must pay a dollar end of section eighteen end of a book of fairy tale bears by clifton johnson